You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Field Yates over at ESPN Post Combine has put out his top 50 prospects in the NFL draft. He's got Jaden Daniels number two, no big surprise. Jaden Daniels number two behind Caleb Williams. It's kind of a, a consensus a lot of people have now. Marvin Harrison Jr., number three on the list. Um, and Malik Neighbors one spot back at number four. So you got LSU, the quarterback, Jaden Daniels at two, and Malik Neighbors, the receiver, at number four. I mean, at this point, Excuse me, we all understand kind of the order that it is for the LSU players. It's just a matter of where they fall on the list. Um, the high, Mel Kuyper's probably highest on Brian Thomas. He's got a number 11 overall. Uh, is the number 11 overall prospect in the draft. A field Yates has Brian Thomas 18th overall, except, especially after he ran a 4-3-3 at the Combine. I mean, you lead the nation in touchdown receptions. You go run 4-3-3 at the Combine. It's going get, to uh, get a lot of people's attention. The one that was most interesting to me, and keep in mind this is just ranking... Uh, not by position, just ranking the top 50 players in the draft coming out of the combine. Going into the combine, I told you there were two players that I was looking at. I thought Brian Thomas had the most to lose. And not to say that he wasn't going to perform well, just to say that crowded receiver class, he was a consensus first rounder, but if he didn't perform well at the combine, he could fall. Not a lot of room to go up because the first three guys seem to be locked in. Harrison Jr., uh, Malik Neighbors, and Roma Dunze. Not a lot of room to go up, but you certainly could fall. The case in point is Keon Coleman. Didn't perform well at the Combine. A lot of mock drafts now have, have him out of round one. So I said that I thought Thomas had the most to lose potentially. He solidified himself. The guy I thought with the most to gain was Mason Smith. A guy who came into the year as a potential first-round draft pick. Before the Combine, there were some projections that had him as a late day three, or UDFA. So obviously a guy with that skill, physicality, the measurements, all of that, had a huge opportunity to combine to go be the physical freak that he is. He could be a workout warrior and massively increase his draft stock. Well, lo and behold, Field Yates ranks Mason Smith the 50th overall prospect in the entire draft coming out of the combine. The quick write-up, Smith was on his way to a star career as a true freshman in 2021, but an ACL injury just seven plays into the 2022 season ended his sophomore year. But he worked his way back into his old self throughout the 2023 season. Did he? The draft is an exercise in projection, and teams will be buying into the physical tools that Smith brings to the table. Consider that he ran a 501 in the 40 at 306 pounds. Again, huge for Mason Smith to go and measure the way he was going to measure and to, and to show off his athleticism at that size, something we all know Mason Smith has. So clearly, in the eyes of at least Field Yates and many others, he made the most of it. Yates also ranked and graded uh, every player by position, right? So the top five by position in this draft and when he looked at the top five defensive tackles in the draft, Byron Murphy of Texas, Jerzon Newton of Illinois, Braden Fisk of Florida State, Mason Smith of LSU. Field Yates says Mason Smith is the fourth best defensive tackle in the entire draft. You don't think Mason Smith made the most of his time there in Indy? So, for what it's worth, Field Yates says Mason Smith is the fourth best defensive tackle in this draft. Do you know who was the fourth defensive tackle drafted a year ago? Yes, I'm leading you here. Do you know who was the fourth defensive tackle drafted a year ago? Muse, Pauly, you want to take a guess? Who was the fourth defensive tackle drafted a year ago? Yes, I'm leading you. Brian Brzee. It was Brian Brzee at 29 overall. Now, I'm not suggesting that Mason Smith is going to be a first-round pick. I don't think that's going to happen. But I think what he did at the Combine was certainly pushed himself into a day two pick. Now, maybe that's round three. 
but somebody is going to fall in love with the athlete. Somebody is going to fall in love with the upside with Mason Smith because the reality is God didn't make a whole lot of human beings that are 6'5", 306, that run a 5'0", 140. It's it's what happened with Al Woods years ago. It's the same situation. Al Woods came to LSU. He was a five-star. The production wasn't there at LSU. The Saints drafted him around four, cut him. But Al Woods found a way to make a roster, make a roster, and then 13 years later, you look up, he's still in the league. Because God didn't make too many dudes built like that with that level of athleticism. And when the light bulb comes on, when you coach the player up, you have a potential kaboom. Let me, uh, by the way, also, just as an FYI, if, if let's just say hypothetically, Field Yates' list holds. And Smith is the 50th player taken in the draft, right? They have him as the number 50 overall prospect. The 50th player a year ago was Jaden Reed, a wide receiver out of Michigan State who went to Green Bay. He signed a four-year, $7.1 million contract, middle of round two. I think middle of round two is probably Mason Smith's ceiling in this draft, but I think he solidified himself as a day two pick. The weird thing about Mason Smith is this. If I told you, hey, 10 years from now, Mason Smith is going to be a dominant perennial all pro interior defensive lineman in the NFL. Would you believe it? Would you like would you believe that's possible? I would. I'd say 6'5, 306 pounds. He was a five star. Mike Detilly says he's the most athletic big man ever to come out of the Bayou region. Like we saw it as a freshman. We saw it before his ACL injury. Like I, I could absolutely believe that, that Mason Smith can figure it out, get coached up, and become a perennial Pro Bowl type player in the NFL over the next decade. On the flip side, what if I told you Mason Smith is a day three pick, struggles, becomes a practice squad guy, and doesn't get to a second contract? Would you believe that? I believe that's plausible. I think there is extreme boom potential for Mason Smith, and I don't want to say bust, but because I don't think, I think you'd have to have certain expectations going in. But he has feast or famine potential is a better way to put it. And I'm, I'm pulling for him. I hope he does awesome. I mean, I hope he goes to the NFL and crushes it. Uh, but I think there's going to be a team that is really convicted on the athlete, and they take him in day two. Maybe it'll be the same in round three. If he's hanging around. We'll see. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.